in your heart uh, to uh, share with us about being a vessel of honor, a vessel of glory. So I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred. God is revealing his mysteries. He's had them hidden through the ages and through the generations, but they're now being uh, revealed uh, because he wants us to search out these mysteries and they're available to us and we can, we can search them out and uh, operate in them. Uh, tonight we are talking about the vessel of glory that each of us is designed uh, to carry the glory and to distribute the glory, which is the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And it's a, an important uh, mystery. And one of the most important things I can think about that we carry uh, Jesus Christ within us. And that's, that's something that we can take to the bank that uh, he's there. And uh, what we're going to be talking about today is how to release the glory. How, to, how are we going to release it? And we have to know um, to release it that Christ lives within us. And so uh, we're going to start uh, with Colossians. The very core uh, passage of verses in this uh, message is Colossians 1, verses 27 through 29. And these are connected. Uh, and let me just give you an overview of these three verses. First, it says that it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. Uh, but the next verse is you need to be mature, fully mature. And the third verse is that uh, the minister, in this case, Paul, was operating with the energy of God within him to mature the saints. And, and that was required to bring forth the glory. Uh, they, we have the deposit of Jesus within us, but we have to walk it out. We have to uh, grow. Our spirit man has to grow and mature, and the Christ within us has to be fully and completely uh, developed and formed and fashioned. And so I want to share you to read these verses then. Okay. Colossians 1, 27 through 29. <clears throat> to them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. He is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. To this end, I strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. Okay, so Hallelujah. What translation is that? The New International? That's the New International Version. Okay, it, it really has a lot of riches there in it. Just those three verses uh, that we have Jesus Christ within us, but he's deposited in our heart in the inner man, in the spirit man, mm -hmm. and the spirit man has to mature, and the Christ within the spirit man has to be fully and completely formed and fashioned. Now we see well, why he was doing this uh, in Ephesians. Ephesians 3 is, a, is really an overview of the mystery, and particularly it relates to this mystery, but, but it's more general than that. And first of all, we're just going to read a few uh, verses in Ephesians 3, but we're going to see that it has to be revealed. The mystery is revealed, and then we're going to see what the purpose is. And the purpose uh, that Paul says of the mystery is for us to participate in it, to fellowship mm -hmm. in, in the mystery. And then uh, we're going to see <clears throat> how this comes about. So I'm going to ask Sherry to read. Uh, a few verses from Ephesians chapter 3. Starting in <clears throat> verse 3. How that by revelation he made known to me the mystery. I want to stop right here just for a moment. I want you to know, and maybe many of you already know, that you stand on foundation. You stand on the rock, which is Jesus Christ. You stand on rock on foundation, but you move and you grow and you mature in revelation. It says here, he has made known to me the mystery 
as I have briefly written about already, by which when you read, you may understand or comprehend my, my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Now, this is an important point he's making here, that God revealed to him. How did he reveal? By the Spirit. It's the Spirit that see, searches the deep things of the heart of God and it reveals things to people. And then people who have received a revelation can pass that uh, revelation on and you can understand it. It wasn't, Amen. <laughs> you may not have been the one that it was revealed to by the Spirit, but when it is, and you're instructed in those areas, then you know about the mystery and you can operate in the mystery. And so that's what he's saying there. Now, what's the purpose of it? We see it in this next passage. It's in verse eight that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ. Okay, so it's it's been there all along, but it's been hidden through the uh, ages and through the generations. But now it's being revealed it's being revealed to us so we can operate in it. And the purpose is that it's being revealed is that we can participate in it. We can do what Colossians 1, 27 said. Now, Colossians 1, 27, I want you to know, is, is really a promise. And the promises come as a seed, in the form of seed. And that's the reason it's important for us to develop this and understand, because a lot of people can just look at uh, Colossians 1 27 and so well, I've got Christ within me but there's a process that goes on all of this uh, promise is deposited as a seed it has to have time to grow it has to have that uh, mm, process yeah. and, and and has to have all the right ingredients to, to grow and come to maturity and so yes that's the promise but I want Cherry to read this next passage still in Ephesians 3 okay of the purpose of the... No, we've already done the purpose. Okay, right? okay. So we're going to appropriate this. So how do you appropriate mm -hmm. the promise? The that, this is in verse 16. <clears throat> that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened, listen now, with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in what? In love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Basically, this is the same uh, concept that we saw over in Colossians 1.27. But here, it is there in Colossians 1.27, it was presented as a promise. And people just mentally uh, uh, affirm that. But that doesn't mean it's down there working in them. And so now here's a, a way to get the same promise operating in your life. And it's a prayer. Mm -hmm. It's a prayer that he prayed. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ. would grant you something. That he's going to give it. Okay, so he's praying. This is a, a powerful prayer uh, that Paul prayed. And uh, there are two powerful prayers here in Ephesians in the end of the first chapter and the end of the third chapter. This one is about making uh, Christ manifest in your life so that you can pour out the glory. So basically it's the same as Colossians. Colossians and Ephesians are very similar, talk about a lot of the same concepts and using different words. And so that's the reason it's good to look over here in Ephesians. But this is to bring forth what we saw in Colossians 127 about Christ being uh, formed in you to bring forth the glory. Now we're seeing it over here in Ephesians 1 uh, and Ephesians 3, and this is a prayer praying the same thing. And so the promise is then, it's a process. And part of the process of bringing forth the promise is pray, pray, pray. You know, uh, as I said, these are two powerful prayers at the end of Col uh, uh, Ephesians 1 and the end of Ephesians 2. Very powerful Sorry, prayers. End of, end of uh, Ephesians 3. I prayed these prayers over myself for a year. And what, what we're going to see in this passage, how to bring forth what is presented there 
in uh, Colossians 1.27 that we might be a vessel of glory. How do we bring it forth? Prayer is an important thing. Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about tonight. How to make that operating in our operative in our life so that we can be a vessel of glory so that we can pour out the presence and power of God uh, wherever we go. That's the, that's mm -hmm. the concept that in a nutshell, that's what we're talking about today. And just because you see that verse, maybe, maybe somebody has preached that per verse to you over and over. Maybe you've studied that verse, but is it the reality and the practicality of what God wants it to be? And is it in maturity? Mm -hmm. And so all of this works together. What he said in this prayer is that there are two elements. He's talking about our inner man. So our inner man has to be developed. And then in the other part of it, it's the Christ within the inner man has to be fully and completely matured. I want Sherry to go mm -hmm, over this mm -hmm. again. Okay, which verse? Th these uh, Ephesians 3 mm -hmm. here on how to appropriate Christ within us okay. and distribute out the glory. Okay, let's listen. <clears throat> be attentive again. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. Now we are speaking this over you to be strengthened with his might through his spirit in the inner man. Okay, so it's it's in the inner man. You've got two things down there inside of you. You've got the inner man and you've got the Christ within you. And they're two different things and, and both of them have to be Develop. Yes, and, and matured. So, and matured. And so, first of all, you've got your heart, your inner man, the spirit man, that has to be matured. And so, here's a prayer. Pray this uh, over your inner man, over your spirit man, so it might mature so that it can hold the full uh, and complete Wait. Christ mm -hmm. being fashioned in the spirit man. Mm -hmm. So the both of those, and this prayer addresses both of those issues, the spirit man and the Christ within the spirit man. Mm -hmm. Okay, read this. And then verse 17, okay. that Christ <clears throat> may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love. Okay, so there it is. Hallelujah. This is a way you can pray. Oh, we're talking about how to, be a vessel of glory. How can we distribute the glory, which is the presence and power of God operating in our life? And Father, right now we just speak over this group tonight, this <clears throat> wonderful, powerful group. And Lord, that you will strengthen them with might through your spirit in their inner man, Lord. Let their inner man, just that encompasses the, the Christ man, uh, that they will develop, they will mature in Jesus' name, that Christ may dwell in their hearts through faith, Lord. Let faith arise in each one of us tonight in the name of Jesus, and let us be rooted and grounded in love, because love never fails. Hallelujah. 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 God's love never fails. And if there's any situation that you're in and that you're facing tonight, I am telling you that love is the answer. Hallelujah. God's love is the answer. Hallelujah. Love is healing. Love is prosperity. Love is uh, comfort. Love is hope. Oh, hallelujah. It encompasses all of those things. Love is joy. And so it is, I just, I, We've spoken that over you okay. and over ourselves in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, so there are five points I want to make. First, in order for the, all of this to operate, we have to be oh, obedient. obedient. It's about obedience to the word of God. Mm. You know, uh, Jesus made an important statement here in uh, John 14. Shall you read this for us? Jesus answered and said <clears throat> to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. So inside of you, you've got the father, you've got the son, Jesus Christ, and you've got the Holy Ghost, okay. which is the power of God. Okay, so here we saw in Colossians 1.27, a promise 
that you had Christ within you. You could be a vessel, a vessel of glory. You could be pouring out the glory. But first of all, you have to be obedient to the mm -hmm. word of God because Christ is going to be planted inside of you. He comes as a seed. That's the way the kingdom operates. The kingdom operates like this, that the sower goes out to sow the sow word. Sow the seed. That is to sow the word, sow the seed, the seed, and it goes there. And then the seed, this is important. The seed's going to uh, begin to operate. You don't know how or when, but germinate. It germinate and it begins uh, growing. Okay, so that's the way Christ is in us. He he become, he comes in there when we're obedient. When we're obedient to him, he's going to come and make his abode in there. But first, it's going to be at a seed level, at a at a small level and a small presence. And, and so what we want to do over time is to let that grow. Well, we have to be obedient to the word of God. And here are just a few things we need to be obedient to. And that, these are some of the things that Jesus said, uh, that John 3, 3 and 5, uh, that we have to be born again. Mm -hmm. Amen. Unless one is born again, he cannot even see the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Okay. So... There are things that Jesus said we must do. And so for him to come and make his abode with us, in order for him to grow mature and be formed fully and completely and eternally within us, there are conditions. We have to obey his word and we have to be born again. We're born mm -hmm. again uh, and and also born of the water and born of the spirit. spirit. Now we could say born of the water is natural, but that really everybody's born that way. Uh, but we can also talk about the baptism water, yes. where we come into the new life after our sins are buried uh, with Him, and then we're raised uh, to in resurrected power to live with Him. There's also the power of the washing of the water of the Word. Mm, so, hallelujah. And you have to have all of this going on in your life and the Spirit of God. Be born of the Spirit of God. Now, First Peter one twenty three talks about uh, that uh, seed. Mm -hmm. it, it goes back to the seed where we're born of seed. Oh, hallelujah. I want you to read this. Hallelujah. <clears throat> First Peter one twenty three, Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible. Woo, hallelujah. hallelujah. Through the word of God, which lives, it's alive. The seed is alive and abides forever. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. So this Thank process we're talking about tonight begins at a, at a small, in a small state. It's a, it's a seed in the form of a seed. So it's got to be growing. And so we have to realize, we have to have knowledge about this process I'm talking about tonight that you have a spirit man and and uh, your father is a spirit and so the real you is spirit mm. but but your spirit mm. when you're born again it's immature and it has to be uh, developed it has to grow and mature and, and paul said here yeah, i'm here I, i've got some energy operating in me and i'm going to mature you Ooh, going hallelujah. To, I, I want you to be become mature so mm. that your spirit man can hold the full and complete Christ within you. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, so my first point is about obedience. Mm. We have to obey the word in order for Christ to be in there and doing what uh, Colossians 1.27 talks about. Amen. Now, we want to talk about faith. And uh, Philemon, which is a small letter uh, right before Hebrews, and it's a uh, only one chapter, but it's verse six in that one chapter. And it says, this is how to make your faith effective. You've got to acknowledge mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you have a spirit man Woo! and that Christ is within yes, yes. your spirit man. And that's the only way your faith yes. is going to be effective. You have to recognize and understand what is going on inside of you. Okay, Sherry, read this verse. That the sharing <clears throat> of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every, listen to this, every good thing 
that is within you through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, are you doing that? Am I doing that? Are we acknowledging every good thing? If and, and when we do that, then then our faith is effective. Okay. Hallelujah. And another word there for the Greek word, if you look at that, that's uh, the word, uh, uh, what I pronounce it, uh, I say energies. That's energies. Mm -hmm. that, uh, if you want your faith energizing. Woo! Hallelujah. And, and the other, you, you've got to be acknowledging what's in you. And what's in you? It's the Christ within you. And of course, when Christ came, he brought everything with him. He brought the kingdom. He brought mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is the king of the kingdom. Amen. He, energy energy so you you want your faith to be energized well it's the same word that's over there in hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 mm. it says the word of god oh, is alive and powerful, powerful energizing the same word yes. energies okay. and energy. it can separate the flesh <clears throat> from the spirit hallelujah. the word of god can do that hallelujah yeah. and for that seed to grow and develop in us then that's 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 a separation time that's when the flesh and the spirit have to be separated okay. and the only thing that helps that is the is the word of god now this is a mystery but it's important yeah. for us to acknowledge the mystery that's within us oh, what's hallelujah. really going on oh. there. it's the christ and, and we want that christ to be developed fully and the next uh, point i want to make is about being in the right position in the body of Christ mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and functioning Hallelujah. in your position, being in the right position Amen. in the body and functioning in the body. That This is what's going to bring forth that uh, Christ within you. So it's easy to just affirm mentally that he's there, but mm -hmm. we need to be doing some things in order for him to come forth fully and completely okay oh, hallelujah. okay so what i have is just a few verses just to highlight a few from uh ephesians 4 and of course it talks about that there are ministry gifts given by christ isn't mm -hmm. that interesting <laughs> and they're given by christ yes and, and what are they going to do they're going to bring forth christ within us oh hallelujah and not, not just one person it's about all of us coming together <laughs> And and growing together and bringing forth Christ. So it, it's it's really interesting that it's Christ starting this process. He's giving these gifts of apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to equip us so that we all together oh, yeah. hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, can do the work. Amen. It's not about the Amen. ministers doing the work. It's about you and me. It's about the saints doing the work. So I want you to read a few passages here. It says, and he, Christ himself, gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers. For the equipping or the maturing of the saints for the work of ministry. It's not that he has given all of this to us to form our own ministries, to have our own ministries. It is to equip those in the body of Christ to do the work of the ministry for the building up or the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come into unity, not just agreement, <clears throat> but unity. And I have found, and we have found, we, we just did a, a marriage uh, seminar in Savannah. And, and we talked about this, the difference between agreement and unity. And unity is that we're headed to all the same direction. As we're, Christ. As Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. And we're with him. And, and that's the way he wants the body of Christ. And that's where he commands the blessing. That's where he commands the blessing. Psalm 133. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, read on. Till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man to the measure of the statue of the fullness of christ 
It's so amazing. Hallelujah. Christ, it's Christ that gave these ministry gifts so that we can all come to the full stature of Ooh, Christ. Hallelujah. He's not holding anything back. He's giving it to Amen. us. Amen. He's got a purpose for it. Okay, go ahead. Speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things unto him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined and knitted together by what every joint, what every joint. That's you and me. Supplies. Okay, so here, this is our position. Who who are you joined with? Who who? Who are you connected with Amen. in the body of Christ? Amen. Because you, that's where you supply things. They supply things to you. It, it's, as I said, this point three is about finding your position mm, in, in the body, body and functioning there and offering your supply, offering your energy, your grace, your mercy, your compassion, Amen. offering what you have. And that's the way you'll be able to do the ministry. Hallelujah. So Christ Hallelujah. had this amazing plan. Of course, it's a, in God is a mystery. But but he started all of this by giving the ministry gifts to equip us so that we all grow up in him. We all begin to function uh, in the body as he has positioned us. Amen. Because Amen. that's what pleases him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. So Hallelujah. I've gone through three parts. We have to be obedient. Uh, we have, there, there's just, uh, we have to operate in faith and acknowledge what's going on inside of us. We have to find our place in the body of Christ. Now, here we are, number and four. And our joints. We have to find where we are joined because that's where you will grow in the, in the regular, in our regular, in our, our natural bodies. You grow at your joints. That's where the growth comes from. Your height, or you know, that's that's where it comes from, and it's the same in the body of Christ that you will grow where you are joined. And there are some people out there that are just wandering around, and they don't know who they're joined to. And then you've got uh, ministers out there, you've got evangelists that needs to that need to come out of the field and go into being pastors, and you've got apostles that need to be uh, prophets you've got so god is putting things in order this is a season of putting things in order both in the natural realm and in the spiritual realm okay so this third point we're talking about how Four. we all no the oh, third okay. point we're talking about how we all come together into the head which is christ and we grow up into that perfect man uh, together we do all this together you can't do what we're talking about tonight on your own you have to be in the position of the body and now we're looking at point number four and this is about prayer mm -hmm. it's going to take some prayer to bring forth christ within you I mean. as i said I, I prayed these two prayers in ephesians uh, one and three i prayed them for every day for a year over myself and i pray these prayers over other people. And so let's look at prayer. Sure. Okay, in Galatians 4.19. This is an important verse. Reese. Yes, it is. Listen to this. My little children, this is all speaking. Okay, now Paul is writing to the Galatians. And these are people he's already led to Christ. So they're already mm -hmm. born again. But something's fixing to happen because he is earnest. He is laboring in prayer about something. Let's see what it is. This is my little children for whom I labor or travail in birth again until Christ is formed in you. Okay. Now that is intercession. Okay. That is intercession. We saw in Colossians 1, that's the beginning. How, how do we become a vessel of honor? That's a promise. We, vessel of glory. A, a, a vessel of glory that we've got Christ within us. Well, right here, he's saying, you're born again, but I'm continuing to pray for you so that Christ will be formed in you. And I have several other verses and several other translations I want to share to read. So we get an idea of what being formed, Christ being formed in us. Some adjectives here. Okay, read this. Of the Passion Translation says, one will be fully formed until the anointed one will be fully formed in your hearts. Okay. 
So we say Christ formed in us, but now we're saying fully formed. Oh, that's good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> He's not in a mature, immature state. He's fully formed. Fully formed. Let's look at some other translations. Then the Amplified Bible says, until Christ is completely and permanently Ooh, that's formed within you. Hallelujah. So we're praying here. Oh, I love that. We're praying here for something important. Okay. And then the message says, Christ's life becomes visible, becomes visible in your life. Okay. Hallelujah. So I want to ask you now, is Christ visible in your life as you're out walking uh, through uh, town and uh, out through the stores? Is Christ visible? That's what we want. Mm, Hallelujah. Mm, 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 mm. Hallelujah. Okay, I've, I've got another passage here in uh, Ephesians 1. I want you to read this. This is a prayer. It, it's a different words, but it's the same as Colossians 1, 27. Let's read this. Ephesians 1, 17 to 19. <clears throat> that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, okay. may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Okay, so it's going to tell you how to bring forth Christ within you. It's going to take some wisdom and revelation. revelation. And, and so we pray. We pray for these things. Pray, And you can pray for yourself. Pray for wisdom and revelation because we want Christ formed in you. Okay? Go ahead and read that, that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Okay, so this is talking about the same thing as Colossians 127. It's just using different words. In Colossians 127, it's talking about a promise. Now here it's the prayer. And so it's prayer and it's bringing forth the Christ within you. It's also called the inheritance, bringing forth that. And it's talking about from the Father of glory. So you can distribute the glory that because we're talking about you being a vessel of glory. Now, mm. I'm going to end it up with an application. And I just have three uh, simple applications here. Uh, how can we, and I, I'm going to take them all from Philippians chapter 2. And, and first of all, I want to talk about the, the three. And first, the mind of Christ is the first thing I want to talk mm. about. And, and if you have the mind of Christ, make some decisions, predetermine what your choices are going to be. And, and I, I say that, by rather than just reacting to problems, reacting to situations, go ahead and, and begin making decisions how you would handle situations, predetermine some choices so that you're not always just reacting to a situation. And let me give you a few examples here. Let's say uh, you're having problems with somebody, maybe in the, in the workplace or maybe in your family. Maybe you're having some problems. Well, begin to pray and ask God about how can I make choices here that uh, when they say this or they come back with that or they're not willing to do what I ask them to do or they're, I don't know if that would ever happen to you, but, but if you, you begin to imagine what would they do and then you ask the Lord uh, through his spirit uh, what your response should be. So you're already getting ready uh, for situations that, that might be coming up because you face these kinds of situations. Mm -hmm. If it's been in the workplace, you're, you're facing these uh, situations, difficult situations on a daily basis. And if it's in your family, you're facing these difficult situations on a, on, on a, a regular basis. And so why not get ready for it rather than just get mad when, when it happens again and, and you've told people not to do it and yet they do it again, rather than getting mad, Let's already go ahead and be praying and thinking about what should my response be yes. if they do it again. Amen. <laughs> I've already told them not to do it, but what if they do it again? What's my response going to be the next time? And you ask the Lord because you've got the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. And you want to know, you, you, you want to uh, submit to his mind, what, what his plan, what his strategy mm -hmm. uh, to deal with uh, a, a co-worker that's a, uh, not doing what they should, not doing their job, causing you problems, or a family member yeah. that, that's uh, 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 causing problems or facing all kinds of issues. Uh, let's go ahead and get 
get this the mind of Christ on it and, and be ready Hallelujah. to respond. I, I, I know if you, you if you That's were good. in a, a debate, if you were having a, a debate uh, contest, you'd basically want to uh, identify what your points you wanted to make, what the end results, the points you want to make. And, and then you think about what are they going to be their arguments and how can I transition from what they're saying uh, to my points I want to make. And so go ahead and be planning. Uh, and, and don't just be reacting. Be proactive. Oh, and, that's and, good. And that's right the mind. Of, find out the mind of Christ. See, if you're just facing a difficult situation, and then all of a sudden you only see one a solution to it, and then you pray uh, to God, and, and you're going to probably just hear, oh, this, there's just one solution. Just go ahead and do this one thing. And so you haven't really consulted him. You already had in your mind. I know this happens a lot of times that uh, you've already identified what the solution is. And then when you pray, uh, the only thing you come up with an answer to your prayer is what you already knew. Uh, but if you're thinking about it beforehand, you're getting uh, the mind of Christ on things. Uh, and so you're not reacting, but you're proactive. Oh, yes. You're planning, you're strategizing because mm -hmm. some of the people that you've been dealing with have been contrary. <laughs> and they've, yeah, uh, they've, amen. they've done things and, and they're in patterns. They're, they're going to be doing things. And so you've already seen it. You're going to see it again. So why not get ready for it and use the mind of Christ and not just react? Okay. It's very good. Now the next one, the next one, we ought to be fascinated. Mm -hmm. fascinated, fascinated with the Christ that's within us. About Christ within. Woo! This is in uh, Philippians 2. That's something worth getting excited yes. about. Amen. Being fascinated with him. Okay, go ahead. 9 through 11. God also has highly exalted him, Jesus, and given him the name which is above every name. If you can, if you can call it out, if there is a name out there, uh, any type of mental illness, any type of disease or sickness, if it has a name, then you can speak Jesus over it, and it's, it takes authority over that, takes authority over pain or discomfort or any type of depression or anxiety, uh, disbelief or doubt. It says here that at that time, at that name, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to what? To the glory of God the Father. Okay, so if you want to distribute glory, if you want to be a vessel of glory, let's, let's be focusing. Let's be focusing on the Christ within us. Amen. And there's three things here I'm, I'm, I'm pointing out. We need to have his mind. We need to be thinking about strategies before we're facing the same old problem. Let's begin using his mind. Let's call on his mind. Ask the Lord, what would you do in this situation? And be fascinated with him so that this, the Christ, mm -hmm. the Christ who created everything lives inside of you. That is amazing. And we ought to ask him, what do I need to do in this situation? How do I need to adjust? How do I need to change? Mm -hmm. oh, I'm in the process of, of being, change. being changed. <laughs> and the greater one lives in us. And, and rather than just say, well, all these difficult situations uh, that I deal with, uh, and sometimes they come back around, they come back around. Well, it's because we haven't changed. They're, they're going to keep coming mm -hmm. around until we change. Uh, the way God wants Ooh, us to change. Hallelujah. So we need to be asking him, mm, how do mm. I change? And then what do you want me to mm. change? So it may not be the other person that needs to change. <laughs> but when we change, Hallelujah. then it changes the situation. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's good, Freddie. Okay. Now I have a third point here. Uh, submit your will to God's will. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. you know, that's what Jesus did. Not my will, yeah. Father, but your will, your will be done. It's a difficult situation he was in. He said, not my will, but your Can we follow Jesus? <laughs> Isn't that what we're supposed to be doing? Following Jesus, submit mm -hmm. our will, his will. Amen. And Philippians uh, 2.13 is really a good verse on this. And this is out of the Amplified uh, Translation. 
for it is not your strength, but it is God who is effectively at work in you, Ooh. every one of us. Christ is in you. Both to will and to work, that is, strengthen, energize, and create in you the longing and the ability to fulfill your purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to and for, for his good pleasure. Yeah, okay. So this is pleasing to him when you, we let him do his will fulfill in our us. purpose, his will in us. Mm -hmm. uh, he's going to be pleased with that. Hallelujah. We, Hallelujah. Say, oh, I submit to you. I submit to your will. Let yes. your will be done in this situation. I, I may think I have a solution to it, but I, I know you. your will is better. It's going to bring forth eternity, my eternal purpose. I let your will and your work. Now, this word work, what does it say about that, Jerry? It says that it's strengthening it's energizing Ooh, energizing do you see that and it is creating hallelujah. something in us hallelujah okay so what we need and, and paul made it very clear we need god's energy working in us to mature us to be a vessel of of glory glory and now we see the same thing over here but how do we get it when we submit to his will then he's going to energize us for our eternal purposes. So Amen. again, this is the application. We have to stay focused on what is inside of, of us. us. Hallelujah. That's Christ in us. us the hope, hope of, of glory. glory. And I've given you three you, quick Jesus. ways to do it. Make some decisions and strategies how you're going to respond. Uh, to difficult situations before they occur. Don't Amen. just Amen. Re don't be reacting all the time. Let's be proactive. And and then also we want to. Uh, that of course that was about the mind of Christ. We want to be fascinated yeah. to think that the Creator of the universe yes, lives, lives in, in us. us. He's got he's got the answers. Whatever the situation is, he's got the answers for it. Hallelujah. These are just ways God. that he's we God. can stay focused on the Christ of, in us rather than the problem around us because that, they come up as weeds. And the, so when this word is sown in you, see the enemy wants to come and steal it out of your heart and, and, the, and the cares of this world are gonna come up and, and they're gonna try to choke out this word. That's thank right. You, thank you for being here. I'm oh, gonna turn hallelujah. it over to you. Thank you know, you. I think about the, in the book of James and I'm gonna open up the floor in just a moment. Uh, in the in the book of James, it says, submit yourself unto God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And many people only, they cut off the first part. And they say, resist the devil and he'll flee from me. No, that's not what it says. It says, submit yourself unto God. And this is part of submitting our will to his will. You know, when people tell me, oh, the devil's been on my back all all week and he's been doing this and he's been doing that then 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 inside of me it rises up and and even if i'm i'm the i've said the same thing that that i haven't submitted my will unto his will because when i submit unto god and resist the devil he will flee from me and then the word is powerful the word is truth uh, the word is a mighty sword and a weapon that we can use against any difficult situations. And I know that we have had difficult situations in our family in the, in the last couple of weeks. There have been issues that have come up that only God could, could do something about. And we have testimonies of how faithful God has been and he has reversed those situations he has reversed them and this is what he wants for each one of you he wants a reversal of anything you've been going through any situation that you have been facing he wants to reverse it and the way we do that is through becoming those vessels that god can pour through 